Thank you, Donald, and good evening, everybody. Well, the day began, it was Theresa May's My Way article in The Sun, and there she was on the front page, dressed up as Frank Sinatra, basically saying, look, I, I'm doing these things because I believe it's right for the country. I'm not thinking about myself or my career, just about you and your families, and getting the right Brexit, and all of this ahead of her appearing this afternoon before the House of Commons, having come back from the summit on Friday. Here she was speaking earlier, telling us... We're 95% of the way towards a withdrawal agreement. This progress in the last three weeks builds on the areas where we have already reached agreement on citizens' rights, on the financial settlement, on the implementation period, and in Northern Ireland, agreement on the preservation of the particular rights for UK and Irish citizens, and on the special arrangements between us, such as the common travel area, which has existed since before either the UK or Ireland ever became members of the European Economic Community. Mr Speaker, taking all of this together, 95% of the withdrawal agreement and its protocols are now settled. There is one real sticking point left, but a considerable one, which is how we guarantee that in the unlikely event our future relationship is not in place by the end of the implementation period, there is no return to a hard border between Northern Ireland and Ireland. Well, in terms of understanding it, so far, so good. Uh, but then it all got really rather tricky, confusing. At times, I thought, almost incomprehensible. Here she was on the Irish backstop. So what I'm saying is that if at the end of 2020 our future relationship was not quite ready, the proposal is that the UK would be able to make a sovereign choice between the UK-wide customs backstop or a short extension of the implementation period. Were we to need either of these insurance policies, whether the backstop or a short extension to the implementation period, we could not be kept in either arrangement indefinitely. Well, I'm sure you all followed that absolutely to the letter. I thought I was listening to, yes, Prime Minister, Sir Humphrey, explaining something in the way that the Prime Minister couldn't possibly understand. I mean, frankly, on some of this stuff, she was all over the place. She talked at one point about an option to extend as an alternative to the backstop. And then later on in the speech, she said, I see any extension or being in any kind of backstop backstop as undesirable basically folks uh, she was there she's in trouble big trouble with her own party talks they might oust her this week whether they've got the guts i'm not so sure but there is talk of it uh, and, and and she's in a really difficult position uh, all i have to say of her own making uh, corbyn did hit back at the dispatch box and quite rightly said that the tory party looked very divided um, it was really more at war with each other than it was uh, getting on with doing the job in brussels and he made a very good point actually he said well how can 95 percent of it be agreed if as you told us before nothing is agreed until everything's agreed and I have to say I would say if 95 percent's agreed why would you want more time surely if five percent was agreed you might ask for more time some of it doesn't quite make sense he did also though uh, Corbyn absolutely outline that Labour's policy is that we should be in a comprehensive customs union which of course would mean we would not be able to do our own free trade deals and he hasn't answered the question on continued freedom of movement. Let me tell you folks what neither of them said at the dispatch box and what no single speaker said today at the dispatch box. If they need this extra year which of course the European Union are more than happy to grant them. According to the Financial Times the next, the year of 2021 will be part of the new multi-annual financial framework, the new seven-year spending round for the European Union. The Financial Times estimate in that the UK's contribution will be 25 billion euros. That's well over 20 billion quid, with, of course, absolutely no guarantee of any rebate or any monies coming back at all. Uh, and that point seemed, for some reason, to have passed Parliament by. But tell me. If the PM is right, and that 95% of this deal is so far done, would you want to grant her more time? And if you think, yep, if that's the practical way to get this done, then call 0345 973 If you think, look, the fact is it's deadlock, we're wasting our time here, text to 84850. And would a new leader at this stage and a fresh approach perhaps make a difference? Tell me what you think by using the hashtag Farage and LBC at LBC, 
Watch me on Facebook. I'm live from Strasbourg, where on Wednesday morning we will get Donald Tusk and Jean-Claude Juncker, who so far have said almost nothing about what happened last week at the summit, and they will respond here on Wednesday. Let's go straight to the callers. Let's go to Brian in Newcastle, who's a new caller to the show. Good evening, Brian. Good evening, Nigel. Nigel, can I begin by thanking you for Friday night? It was a wonderful night, and uh, the response from the audience was absolutely marvellous. Um, just in, just the, uh, avoid it, uh, uh, just, just, Brian, just to sort of, in case some of the audience are confused and think we had dinners together, um, <laughs> we, uh, <laughs> there was, a, there was a, or worse, I don't know, but there was, a, there was an event I spoke at up in Gateshead on Friday, and thank you for your kind it, it, words. It's a, it's a wonderful uh, arena, isn't it? You know, the, this sage. The and, sage, uh, I tell you what, the, I, I think the sage theatre at Gateshead is just about one of the one of my favourite modern buildings in Britain. Now, Brian, she's she's basically said we may need more time. Uh, she's all over the show on the backstop. Uh, do you think it's reasonable that, that she Nigel, should be given a further year? You know, I know, and everybody that was there on Friday night will tell you she's obfuscating. Uh, cutting to the chase, I would like her replaced immediately. I would like David Davis to come in to replace her because she's got no intention of implementing what I certainly voted for. And that was, you know, going over the normal um, single market customs union, taking back fishing, yes. all the other things. So she, she well, Brian, no I intention. certainly agree with you. She, she's kicking the can down the road, of that was no doubt. But if David Davis was to come in, and there's talk that he's going to be 70 in December, so he'd be there as a caretaker Prime Minister, how do you think he would deal with this Northern Irish question that Monsieur Barnier has put up and won't, and won't accept any answer to? Well, I think he's got to go back to, you know, the, the re, uh, European Research Group. They've um, put forward ideas. And uh, go going to that... Uh, I, I believe that the Irish border has only become a problem since uh, Uncle Tony Blair got involved, you know. And uh, he's, you know, I, I don't want to mention <laughs> saboteurs again. We've, we've discussed this before. But uh, some of the things, you know, the people that have been going across and conversing with Michel Barnier, I mean, in the past, uh, anybody conversing with, I, I'm not saying the enemy because, we, you know, we want to get on. <laughs> <laughs> well, <with> them, but <laughs> collusion, <laughs> collusion, Brian. That's what you're accusing them of. Collusion. <laughs> yeah. Listen, Brian, I get the message. Thank you. And Theo rather follows that up on Facebook by saying, we don't need to give her any more time. The only date needed is a confidence vote on Wednesday. Now, on Wednesday, she does go to face the 1922 committee, that famous committee of Tory backbenchers. Some are very, very unhappy. I saw Bill Cash today asking a question in the House of Commons. John Redwood. Um, uh, clearly, they're very unhappy. But are they actually going to get rid of her? I, just, I honestly don't know. Paul says, with regards to the Irish backstop, what in the world is she talking about? I'm confused.com. Paul, there were times in that. I said they're sort of Sir Humphrey. I also wondered whether it was sort of, of course, they're no longer with us, sadly, but um, sort of Peter Cook and Dudley Moore type sketch. I mean, it was just going round the houses. I couldn't understand a word of it. Maybe Charlotte in the Forest of Dean understood it all. Good evening. Good evening, Nigel. Um, I haven't, I haven't actually heard of anything of what she's saying at the moment. I've only heard snippets. Okay. I think it was always going to be, um, judging on what's been happening of late, it's going to be capitulation all over again. Um, I people don't realise is that the checkers deal was shown to Angela Merkel before she showed it of the cabinet which to me yes. screams capitulation at a very high level so really oh well charlotte come on come on the germans doing. are the bosses I mean, it's very important i mean there was there was once even a time when the irish government gave the irish budget and it was discussed in the bundestag before it was discussed in the doyle exactly and this is is I mean, we 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 have we have this issue whereby we have a load of remainers trying to wriggle out of um, and deceive the the, the seventeen point four Brexit, um, mm. and, and 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 just pretending to leave when they actually want to leave and the scales are falling from people's eyes and they have been for a long time 
and, and now people oh, I are think, getting very yeah. agitated about it. Uh, no, they are. They are, they are, Charlotte. We must find a good collective noun for Remainers in the House of Commons. Perhaps a denial, I don't know. Charlotte, thank you. Rob says, personally, I think, the only 95% that should be mentioned is the 95% chance she has of being sacked. Well, Rob, in the end, we all get sacked, of course. But the question is, is she going to be sacked this week? Lots of speculation in the papers about it. I'm not so sure. Going to go to John in Golders Green. John, good evening. Hi, good evening, Nigel. Nigel. Well, so so far, no one's giving her a fair hearing at all. But, but Nigel, would you send your football team out with instructions to the goalie to uh, make sure that the other team doesn't lose the match, either draws it or, 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 or they win? Or would you send your yeah. boxer into the ring and uh, with instructions to get beaten up for eight rounds just for the appearance? Because that's what's going on here. <laughs> there, there's there's yeah, no negotiation. She voted remain. And, and therefore... Yes. <laughs> she's she's not really on our side. Whatever deal she comes back with, if she goes from 95 to 100%, the people who voted mm. leave aren't going to like it, and the people who voted to, to remain aren't going to like it. So she's not no, talking well that's our that, language. Yeah. And, John, will you try and please everybody? You, you, immediately. Yeah. OK. No, John, absolutely clear as a bell. Well, so far, it's a big nil point for Theresa May. I'm sure some of you out there think she's doing the right thing. Tell me that. 0345 6060 973. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show here on LBC. It's now 6.15. And so to avoid cutting off Northern Ireland from the rest of the country, we're going to go in, stay in the customs union, now possibly until the end of 2021, possibly at a further cost of £20 billion. But does that make sense if she can get the right withdrawal agreement and move us on to a new deal? That's the question I'm asking you. Now, there was a big march, of course, that took place on Saturday in London. Folks, don't underestimate the scale of the Remain campaign, the organisation of the Remain campaign. And I'm going to say it, the professionalism and funding of the Remain campaign. Very interesting report out today on Sky News talking about advertising, particularly on Facebook. Anti-Brexit groups at the moment, well, it's quite interesting that if you look at the last three months, the 177 ads were run on Facebook by Best for Britain and the People's Vote. You contrast that to what was out uh, from Leave Means Leave or Leave.eu, it's a total of about nine. So by almost a factor, you know, it depends, 30 to 1, 40 to 1, uh, the Remain side are out campaigning the Leave side on Facebook advertising. And that's before Nick Clegg becomes, well, not quite the global boss, that's Mark Zuckerberg, but takes up a very, very well-rewarded post and moves out to the West Coast. So don't any of you underestimate just how well-funded and well-organised the Remain campaign are, because they really, really are. Mary says, when Theresa May was elected Tory leader, as Brexiteers, we hoped she'd be a bridge over troubled waters. We were wrong. If we don't rid ourselves of May, we will never have the Brexit the UK voted for. Mary... I agree with that 100%. I think at the moment we're on course. I still believe we are on course to leave on March the 29th next year. And, and, and that of itself, I guess, would be looked at in the history books as being a big, great historic departure. But if we're left wrapped into everything and not able to take any benefits from it, that, I think, would be a massive lost opportunity for our country. Paolo says on Facebook, why are the Brexiteer MPs called rebels? Surely the rebels are the Remainers, as the referendum result was to get out. You'd have thought so, Paolo, but hey, I'm off to Middlesbrough to speak to Ted, a new caller to this show. Good evening, Ted. Hi, Nigel. Uh, Stockton, actually, not far away from Middlesbrough. <laughs> um, Stockton, OK, uh, right. Well. Yeah, um, yeah, I mean, I, I actually uh, helped run the uh, Leave campaign uh, in 2016 and spent about five months on the streets and knocking doors and in Stockton High Street every Saturday. Uh, so I'm really yep. angry at uh, the fact that the Tory party have allowed this woman to remain in charge uh, of something she's never believed in. She campaigned to remain, then she becomes a prime minister, and she doesn't believe in what, uh, what she's trying to achieve. Uh, if you go out with that attitude, you've lost already. So what should happen then, Ted? I mean, I mean, she's saying if you give her another year, if, if she needs up to another year, she might just sort all this out for us, Ted. Well, I think it's just uh, the EU trying to gain time to get Corbyn in, to tell you the truth. 
Um, the longer it goes on, the more power they've got, the more um, mm. arguments against us. And then you've got this nonsense of 700,000 marching, uh, saying we want a people's vote. Excuse me, 17.4 million people voted. The highest turnout in, in our history, and they've voted to leave. They need honouring. It's far, far bigger than 700,000. And at that point, Nigel, I would really urge you, with your contacts with uh, Leave Means Leave, get a march in the North East, and let's get a million marching in the streets of Sunderland, and I'm sure people will rally around it. And well, I, I, I think that's... I suspect that's a tall order. Ted, can I just ask you, as somebody yeah. who, as you said, you know, gave five months of your life to this campaign, how do you feel now? Do you feel disillusioned or angry? Uh, very angry. Uh, more so at my local MP, who uh, I stood in Stockton South uh, for your party uh, and mm -hmm. got 12.5% of the vote. And 4,000 of them, 5,000 odd votes, went to Dr. Uh, Paul Williams, who stood on a Labour manifesto of leaving the EU, and now he is yep. campaigning strongly to remain. That is disgraceful. He's asking for a second that is referendum. Not good. I've wrote to him yep. and asked him to give us a second referendum on him. I've asked him to stand down <laughs> people and give us a, a, a by-election, and let's see how many people vote for him next time. There won't be many. OK. Ted, thanks so much indeed for that. Paul says, more time would be ridiculous. It's just longer for the EU cr to create yet more mayhem by saying no to everything whilst charging us billions for the privilege. And that's right. You know, another year of this transition, it's another 20 billion quid. What will we get back? I, I would doubt... We'd be lucky to get five billion back. Maybe we get nothing back. I simply don't know. William says, what is the point of letting May sort out the withdrawal agreement and move on to the trade agreement if it's not Canada plus, but more checkers mega minus? May should be replaced now. I am sensing, I mean, it could just be this show, uh, but I'm sensing a lot of people feeling that the end should be be nigh for Theresa May. Paul is calling from Stoke, a new caller to the show. Good evening, Paul. Right, Nigel, how are you? Yeah, not too bad. You, yeah, you well, right, you welcome. Nigel? Great stuff. I'm yeah, all right. Well, I'm, well, I'm, actually, actually, Paul, yeah. Paul, I'm pretty angry as well, but, yeah, um, yeah, well, you know, how do you... I'm really angry about this. It's been messed, messed about the last two years and nothing's been done, and all of a sudden, all, of a, all left too late. It'll all be left too late until next March, and, until we, and then it'll be all, I don't know, no idea. But as far as I know, she should, she should stay where she is, until you get the mess sorted out, I think. Until it's all so sorted you would out. back at it. Okay, so despite everything, yeah. you would say she needs to stay in place and sort that's this. That's right, yeah, that's right. Just stabilise the country, this country, yeah, but at the moment, yeah. You know, she should, she should but, stay. But yeah. Paul, let me ask you. Yeah. Do you think. I mean, she's kind of tried to please yeah. leave us and please remain us. Do you think she's bringing stability to the country? Because I think we're actually. At the moment, I sort of get no, this impression. No, no, no. It's hard to say, really. No. Because you're having marches, aren't they? Uh, but uh, starting having I mean, marches, wants... and they'll get even more worse as time goes by, won't you? In the next few months, I think, you know. Um, well, as we approach. More marches, I must imagine. As, yeah. As we approach March the 29th, it is likely that the Remain side uh, will become louder and louder and louder. But, Paul, you say give her a chance. I thank you for your call. Peter in Sunderland is also a new caller. Good evening, Peter. Hi, I'm Nigel. I just feel really angry that 17.4 million of us are going to be betrayed by the biggest betrayal of British democracy ever. May Corbyn. Now we've got that hypocrite Nick Clegg working for Facebook. What was he said two years ago? There were a morally corrupt company who weren't paying the tax, yet he's happy to earn a million pounds for them. He's going to place more anti-Brexit adverts on there, and me, you, and all these Brexiteers, Nigel, are not going to get what we voted for, and it's a sad betrayal of British politics. Mm. So you don't think Nick Clegg, when he works for Facebook and deals with political bias, you don't think Nick will be neutral? Uh, very not. He'll have his mate Blair, all them Malister Campbell, all the likes of them. He'll play every advert, Gary Lineker of all these celebrities who can, who hate British people, but happy to work for the BBC and media types like that. There'll be more remain marchers than ever before, and you, Mog, David Davis, and Boris Johnson need to come to Sunderland, where we voted to leave, and my MP I won't remember. even meet I me to discuss her anti-Brexit campaign, even though she stood two years ago, I will do whatever the result says. 
no, she's adamant that she shouldn't, that we shouldn't leave, uh. and it's a betrayal, Nigel, in my opinion. No, uh, Peter, I'm sorry, I, I, you know, it, it is an incredibly strong word to say we've been betrayed by politicians. It really is a strong word, and, 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 and it's not the kind of thing that happens, you know, more than once a decade or once every 20 years, perhaps. Um, but I, I, I do agree with you. Um, as far as Mrs May's concerned, Peter, I mean, would you like the Conservative Party to oust her? You sack her now and put Mogg in charge. Jacob Mogg, I know you, I know you friend with Jacob Reese Mogg. I think he'd be an excellent Prime Minister. And what do you think about that, or do you think he's too inexperienced yet to be Prime Minister? Well, well, he's inexperienced, but, uh, you know, you could argue President Trump was inexperienced politically, but some would say, or at least the approval ratings say, he's doing a good job. Uh, Peter, I, I, you know, I've always... Uh, not wanted to take sides necessarily on this. I think anybody would be better than Theresa May, anyone that believed in Brexit. But uh, uh, Mog, listen, I like Jacob Reese Mog. I think he's terrific. Peter, thank you. And Peter there, really, really upset. And so we've had some calls tonight, not just about Theresa May and the Conservatives, but also response to what Corbyn said today. Labour voters out there, very, very angry indeed. Now, come on, there must be somebody out there. I've had sort of, you know, one caller from Stoke half supporting the Prime Minister. Somebody out there tell me that I've got this completely wrong and that what the Prime Minister is doing is supremely clever and will deliver us a Brexit deal that will command the respect of the country. 0345 6060 973. Theresa May herself could ring in and tell us. I wouldn't mind. You're listening to the Nigel Farage Show exclusively on LBC. It is now 6.30. And well, a somewhat confusing speech from the Prime Minister today in the House of Commons, where if you're into backstops and extensions, even if you studied this, you would at times have really been having a problem following what she was saying. But basically, 95% of the withdrawal deal is done, but she, she could need up to another year to get the last 5% done. Does she deserve that time? But before I get back to that, um, extraordinary revelation has come out from CNN today, saying it's obtained footage of what appears to show a man leaving the Istanbul consulate on the 2nd of October dressed in Mr Khashoggi's clothes and wearing glasses and a fake beard. The source claims that a body double, somebody of similar age and build to Mr Khashoggi, was brought into the building with that team and after Khashoggi was murdered, wore those clothes out. It is quite the most extraordinary story. Uh, what we do know is that uh, the president of Turkey, Erdogan, has said he is going to tell us the absolute full story, possibly as early as tomorrow. Another story that fascinates me. Do you remember President Trump going after Angela Merkel about her complete reliance on the Russians for natural gas? But Germany is totally controlled by Russia because they were getting from 60 to 70 percent of their energy from Russia and a new pipeline. And you tell me if that's appropriate, because I think it's not. And I think it's a very bad thing for NATO, and I don't think it should have happened. And I think we have to talk to Germany about it. Well, there was the president being pretty clear. Today, an announcement. It's in the Wall Street Journal. And can you believe it? Chancellor Merkel has announced that they are now opening up the German market to U.S., liquefied gas and they're doing so for strategic reasons i don't care whether you hate president trump that is how you negotiate that is the kind of leader we need to deal with mr barnier that's my view right back to does mrs may deserve a further year is it indeed time she simply went ashley in high wickham is another another new caller to the show good evening ashley good evening nigel how are you I'm well. Welcome to the show. So what do you think? You. Is she... Is, I, I mean, maybe, may, maybe, Ashley, she's getting it right in a funny sort of way. I don't know if anybody can get it right. I think it's an easy one to have a pop at her because, you know, the opposition find it an easy shot. And by, by that means, I'm saying that everybody who disagrees with May's position is going to have an easy shot at her. My view is that I think it would be nice to see Theresa May post-Brexit. I want to see her in position... While she's dealing with the negotiation, I'd like her to remain. I'd like to see what she's mm -hmm. like as a, as a prime minister without this, this mess, because anybody in the political class would make a mess of this. I agree with you in regard to Trump. He's not a politician. He's a businessman. We wouldn't get a businessman dealing with the political elite in this country because the political elite wouldn't allow it. But the situation... That, no, I, I'm afraid that's true. 
Yeah, All right, Ashley, the, let, let me put this on, let me put please. this to you. Mm. You know, <sighs> Theresa May's gone for this middle way, you know, mm. which we saw from Czech, from Czechos onwards. Mm. At the moment, her EU negotiation only has the support of ten percent of the country. Don't you think that alone tells us something? I don't know where we're getting the ten percent from because I've not been asked in relation to that. Well, just well, that well, deal... Checkers. Yeah, Checkers. Get, checkers gets ten. I mean, roughly, roughly. This is how people feel mm. when when you give people a choice. Twenty percent say let's just remain and stay as we are. Ten percent say the Checkers direction is right. Twenty percent say Canada plus, and twenty percent say just walk away tomorrow. That's roughly how the country is split when you give them. You know, that menu of choices. All I'm saying to you, Ashley, is that she's chosen a course that nobody seems to sort of respect. But look, we, uh, you're, tell me whether or not you agree with this. We've got to strike a deal. Do you, uh, you're of the view that we've got to, I mean, if we're going to go, we've got to strike a deal, yeah? Or if you're of the mind well, that I, well, if we're going to go, well, we won't strike any deal and we'll just cut ourselves completely loose. We can't do that. We've got to strike a deal. And I think the issue Well, no, is, we can, Ashley. We well, can, Ashley. I mean, we can, I, without any deal. Well, well I, don't, I, don't, I don't suggest we stick up two fingers and walk out of the room. I suggest that we say, look, ladies and gentlemen, thanks ever so much. Uh, we get, we're we're going to go to World Trade Organization rules. Uh, we're perfectly happy with that. Uh, when you've uh, got over your tantrum and you want to talk about a genuine free trade deal with us along the lines of the Canada deal, we'll happily talk to you. Something like that, Ashley, I think would actually work. Situation, you're arguing in regards to a certain type of exit. She's arguing in terms of another type of exit. There is no type of exit with a deal with the EU as it stands, which is going to get 100 or even 50 plus percent of the vote or, or percent of the popular vote in this country. Well, it's I think not gonna well, nobody's going to well, agree with a you know a general general agreement with the EU. They don't. You know, you're just not going to find it. So she's going for a certain deal which would be agreeable to the English, to the British people. Whether or not everybody agrees with that is neither here nor there. Simple fact is she's doing the, the trouble is actually, and I, and I'm in support the, of her, actually. The, the, no, no, I've got that, and I'm, I'm, and I'm keen to hear the argument. I just, you know, she, she says to us that it'll be temporary. We'll be in the customs union temporarily, and I just don't quite believe her. Ashley... Thank you. You've made the case for her. Uh, you know, and actually, other people here, Rob, says, look, I've criticised May up until now, but as a staunch leaver, I have to give her credit for the response she gave today in Parliament about a people's vote, saying the people have already voted. She deserves credit there. Rob, I'm with you. She does deserve credit there. See, I can be even-handed. Jordan is calling from Camden. Hi, Jordan. Nigel, how are you? Good evening. Good evening, and welcome back. Uh, so, does she deserve a bit of support for the position she's taking, or is it a betrayal of Brexit, as many think? Um, does she deserve support? It's a fascinating question. I mean, she's our Prime Minister, is she not? I think if we asked our American friends whether she or not is. they wholeheartedly support Donald Trump, overwhelmingly they would say that they do. I think it's our duty and obligation to stand by her in these tumultuous times. Would you agree? No. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. No, no, I really wouldn't, Jordan. I, I really wouldn't. I think right from the beginning, in agreeing the sequencing of the negotiations, right from day one, she's put us in this ridiculous position. She was bullied over to Brussels on the 8th of December last year. She showed weakness and she signed up to this backstop. Now, she's half pretending today we can wriggle out of the backstop. But let me tell you, Jordan, I, I got this letter today from a constituent, uh, and it was a response he got from the European Commission. So this is on European Commission paper. And they say, let us also recall that the UK has agreed to a legally operative backstop solution. And I, this is the problem, Jordan. This is the problem that I'm afraid they're running rings round her, and I think we need somebody else. I genuinely do. Uh, but the fact of the matter, Nigel, is that we don't have anybody else. She is our Prime Minister. And not only is she your Prime Minister and my Prime Minister and the Prime Minister of the 17 yeah. point however many million people voted for Brexit, she is also the Prime Minister of the other half of the country. And I'm sure you of all people know the kind of scrutiny that she must face every day from the left-wing media, from left-wing oh, yeah. people. Hard. You know, I mean, she is, she is everybody's Prime Minister. As much as we would love her to just be you for 15 minutes and pile-drive the whole thing through, we are in the situation we are in, are we not? I mean, it is what it is. 
So she's the best prime minister we've got at the moment, Jordan, yeah? She's literally the only prime minister we've got at the moment, Nigel. I, mean, I know, make, I know, I know. We have. And I think the best thing we can do right now is get behind her. Of course, not behind a, you know, a ridiculous deal. But we, what, what's going to happen most likely is we're going to come up with some sort of Canada plus, 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 plus. Are we not? Well, if... Uh, oh, Jordan, if we did, I'd be thrilled. But, you know, during the war, Churchill sacked generals and put people like Montgomery in charge who did the business. There does come a time, there does come a time when actually the right thing to do is to change course, to change leader, uh, and I would love to see the Conservative Party do it. Do you think it would be wrong to remove her now, Jordan? There's a vote of no confidence in her now, and it's a genuine thing the Conservative Party wants to push forward, and that's fine. I mean, they have the mandate, they're elected, but... Um, it's going to make us look weaker. I don't understand where, you know, if okay. we just made this monumental right. decision and then we suddenly ditch up our minister, what does that make us look like? All right. All right. An argument for continuity there. Thank you. Um, Philippe is calling from the Dominican Republic. That's a long way to call on Brexit. Good evening. <laughs> Great to speak to you, Nigel. I'm a big fan. But I've got to say I disagree with you on the extension of the negotiations. OK. So, as you know... They've got, what, nine months or something left in this term? And uh, the new European Parliament well, that's coming in in May well, is likely well, well, to be well, very much more Eurosceptic and very much more favourable to Britain in general. And the deal has to so, get yeah. the European <laughs> Parliament. Well, actually, actually, Philippe, uh, the first deal, the withdrawal agreement, has to get through the European Parliament with this existing European Parliament, and that could be an interesting challenge, but I guess if we've well, surrendered so much, they probably would. Well, not if you extend the negotiations, and, you know, even Macron is, uh, you, you brought up earlier the, the MFF, the financial framework, the budget for the next seven years. Yes. Even people like Macron yes. are saying, if you've got nine months left in your term, you shouldn't be making decisions that stretch all the way across through the next term of the Parliament. That's ridiculous. Juncker's a lame duck Prime Minister, uh, uh, President of the Commission, the, the, this parliament is in its lame duck sessions. They shouldn't be making these calls at this point. But, Philippe, if, if she's right, let me just, just ask you this. If she's right that 95%'s agreed, why would, you, why would you need up to three years after we're due to leave to sort out the last 5%? Well, if you're just waiting on the, uh, on the elections, you only need, like, an extra six months, realistically. But even then... Uh, I mean, I don't know what, how it works exactly with uh, with the British MEPs, but hey, if you get to stay in there, I think that's a plus. Oh, no, don't. That's, that's don't. Don't. I've been, don't. I'll have been here. I will have been here. On the day with you to leave, I will have been here for 19 years and nine months. And I really, I want to leave more than anybody, Philippe. Philippe, thank you very much indeed for your long-distance call. You're listening to The Nigel Farage Show, exclusively on LBC. It's now 6.45. Mrs May just needs a little bit more time and then we'll have the Brexit that'll suit everybody. It is the My Way Brexit under Mrs May. It's all going to be wonderful. Do you believe that or not? Well, some real cynics out there. Paul says, no, Nigel, your caller was wrong. I thought Ollie Robbins was our Prime Minister. Well, I tell you what, he's the guy that's really leading it. Now, Carol is calling from Bournemouth and she's a new caller to the show. Carol, what made you pick up the phone this evening? Because <laughs> I'm so angry. I am right. so angry because she's had enough time, basically. She's had, how, how long has she had? Well, Did she's we been Prime Minister. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She is not yeah. a good Prime Minister. Uh, I am so angry. Uh, even my husband, he has taken over our lives because I am so obsessed with all what's going on. And um, I'm, I'm just getting so upset with what, what's happening. She's not delivering yeah. what we voted for. You know, Carol, um, you've you you picked up the phone to LBC today, which you've not I done did. before. You know, what I are you? I mean, no. So you I've clearly, you show. clearly. Right. Okay. And, and but do you think, Carol? You know, you and your husband. You say you're absolutely furious about this. But are you are you the odd couple in the street, or do you think lots of your neighbours are feeling the same? I don't really talk about politics to other people because it's a bit of a funny subject. But I tell you something mm. now. I I done an email to my MP on, yep. after your show on the uh, rally, and yes, yes, I yes. told that MP, MP my my local MP, that if Theresa May does not deliver 
the Brexit that I voted for, I will never, yes. never, never vote for the Conservative Party ever again. Carol, never. I 100% I believe you. And I think, you know, when David Davis said that there would be dire electoral consequences for the Conservative Party. If she messes up Brexit, I think David Davis is right. Carol, thank you very much indeed for picking up the phone to us this evening. Jennifer says, the Tories will not do anything to oust her. They'll always put their careers and their pathetic party first. Jennifer, history says you're right. History says all the speculation that we saw in the Sunday newspapers will come to absolutely nothing. That's what history says. We'll find out on Wednesday at the 1922 committee. Ian is calling from Dumfries and is a new caller to the show. Welcome, Ian. Good evening, Nigel. How are you doing this fine evening? Well, I'm, you know, I'm, 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 I mean, I'm annoyed about what's going on, but I'm getting the feeling, Ian, that a lot of the people who've called in tonight are even angrier than I am. No, I do. I, I've got to admit, I am absolutely fuming with Theresa May. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a car-carrying Conservative member, and I'm proud of it. Yes. Unfortunately, I've got to say, I'm not behind our Prime Minister whatsoever. But people are forgetting one thing. And Theresa, I do blame her, but she was put in a very difficult situation. There's one person I do blame, and people forget about this. I blame David mm. Cameron. He walked away from the country. He should have seen it through. And I actually think Cameron would have done a better job, personally. I don't agree. I don't agree, um, Ian. I don't agree for two reasons. Firstly, his renegotiation was an absolute disaster. And secondly, if, he, if he'd done what Harold Wilson did back in 75 and said, look, this is my view, but I'm going to run the country, you guys get on with it, he could credibly have stayed as Prime Minister. He put himself in the front lines of this debate. I think he had yep. no choice but to walk away in. I, 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 I don't disagree with what you're saying there, Nigel, okay, whatsoever. But I t there, is a, there is a situation at the moment within the government itself. Majority of the cabinet are anti-Brexit. I campaigned in Scotland to leave, mm -hmm. and I was part of one yeah. of your previous callers. I was for five months knocking on doors. And one thing I cannot stand about the SNP whatsoever is more people voted to leave in Scotland than voting for the SNP. I know, I know, I know, I know. And in London, and in London, more people voted Leave than voted for Sadiq Khan. So there are some interesting figures out there. Ian, uh, you know, if, for example, a Conservative government was to get back the territorial fishing waters from Scotland, my guess is you double your number of MPs in Scotland. It, do, you, do you want your MPs at the 22 committee this week to get rid of her or not? Yes, I do. But the thing is, though, like one one year person said that we, we, we she just read out there. I don't think there's that many MPs or many fighters out there at the moment who want to be in that job because their careers would be on the line. There's one yeah. person I do. Uh. I, there's one person I do think would do the job. Mm. And you, you 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 mentioned Trump a lot as a businessman, and that's Mr. Reece yes. Mogg. He is a businessman. He will put the country yes. first. And he will put the country in his mind all the time well, through any negotiation. Ian, I tell you whatsoever. what, I tell you what, it's for your party to sort this out because none, none of the rest of us can really directly influence it. Thank you very much for your call. Going to go to Bristol, speak to Matt, another new caller to the show. Hi, Matt. Hi, Nigel. How are you doing? I'm fine. So is, you know, is there an argument that says the Prime Minister's doing the right thing? Um... So I feel desperately sorry for Theresa May. I think she's in a, a no-win situation. I'm not a massive fan of Theresa May, but I think that it would be an intensely difficult negotiation for anybody to undertake, particularly with uh, an organisation such as the EU. And I think that, Quite. you know, she, she's put checkers on the table. Um, you've sort of mentioned before the break that, you know, only 10% of the population supports checkers. I think that yes. almost makes the point, because if you, if you make an assumption, I know it's a broad assumption, that 10% of the population that support checkers are also Brexiteers, which they might not be. Let's just say that they are, though, for the sake of argument. That means that, uh -huh. you know, already there's 30 to 40% of Brexiteers that don't agree with the 10%. And so I, I think there is a 
a sort of disconnect between what people are expecting as an outcome and what's actually going to happen. And therefore, I think that Theresa May has a completely impossible task on her hands because if, if Brexiteers have a different view between themselves as to what constitutes a strong Brexit, well, then well, I think actually, she, she actually, Matt, have a hope in hell. Actually, Matt, actually, Matt, I think nearly all Brexiteers would support go for a Canada Plus style deal or if not, leave on WTO terms, or you could do it the other way around. But if you put it in that, if you phrased it like that, we go to the EU, we say, look, you've got two months, guys, make your mind up. Either you want this deal that is in the interest very much of your car industry, your wine industry, or we walk away. That, I think, would unite uh, Brexiteers. I, I'm, I'm less convinced, but only on the basis that, um, you know, I mean, I, I, I know several Brexiteers amongst my friend group who are cover all sorts of different jobs and, and pay scales and all that kind of yeah. thing. Um, and, and there is a quite an inconsistent view as to, as to exactly what Brexit looks like. So in, in that regard, I, I think she's, well, she's on a high well, for nothing. But I mean, none of us voted for a prime minister that would give away vast sums of money now looking like up to 59 billion pounds, which is just mind blowing. We did vote to get back control of our borders. None of that is imminent. Fisher is. None of that is imminent. Uh, Matt, you know, it's I, I do accept it's a difficult job, particularly if you don't really believe in it. And that's the problem. Matt, thank you. Thanks, everybody. Uh, there's a huge number of first-time callers that I just simply haven't got time to get round to. We could keep this going for hours. Let's see what happens on Wednesday at the 22 Committee. History tells me the Tories will be too cowardly to get rid of her. I really think the time has come and they should. I'll be back tomorrow evening at 6 o'clock. Coming up at 10 tonight, it's Tom Swarbrick. But up next, it's Ian Dow. Nigel, thank you very much. Coming up at 8, our Monday night panel is going to try to answer this rather...